Good morning, everyone. Let me just pull this up real fast. So this morning's uh, plenary panel, you'll notice, doesn't have a theme the way that a lot of the panels have been activist repression or past deliberation. This is just kind of a lot of things that uh, we thought you all should know. So we have kind of a mix of speakers up here today. And what I'm going to be speaking on is a new uh, strategy we have called sustained vegan advocacy. Uh, and it's something that we feel is really important and can be applied even to non-dietary uh, campaigns you're working on, and I'll explain what this means in a second. So it's a strategy that basically in just one program can take people through all three steps of social change, which is the alerting stage, kind of getting them aware of the, product, uh, the problem, the discussion stage, which is where people start to dialogue about these problems, and that should say one, two, and three. Um, and the reform stage, where, uh, where they actually start to make meaningful changes. And in more targeted business campaigns, this might look like the alerting stage would be a protest where the public becomes aware of this issue. The discussion stage would be after your protests start becoming effective, you go and negotiate with them to get a change made. And then in the reform stage, you finally see some meaningful, you know, policy changes and this isn't usually applied to individual behavioral change but we need to take our advocacy behavioral change efforts just as seriously as we take our hard-hitting campaigns and I'm a big supporter of the hard-hitting campaigns that these two over here work on but I think that we need to take the same kind of savvy that they bring to hard-hitting campaigns and bring it to the friendly behavioral change uh, campaigns and it's needed because our movement has recently made great strides in focusing on results-based outreach instead of you know, merely just throwing our message out there and hoping it sticks. But unfortunately, there is evidence that a lot of people who attempt a vegan or vegetarian diet don't stick with it. And some studies, including the Psychology Today one, demonstrate actually that up to 75% of people that explore a vegan or vegetarian diet might revert back to meat eating. And this is a huge problem. Obviously, one, because it means that three-fourths of our efforts might be wasted because they just turn around and, and go back on it. But those people also might be significantly harder to reach in the future because they've already considered trying to go vegan, and now they think it's too hard or too difficult, and they might be harder to reach now than if we had never reached them to begin with. So this is really super crucial that we don't lose this, you know, maybe up to 75%, but even if it's 25%, even 25% of people going back is really, really unacceptable, and we need to find a way to deal with this. The top reasons that they give for reverting back are health concerns, social pressures, and they just like the taste of meat. And I have a feeling that a lot of those health, con health concerns are actually a version of social pressure still, which is they say they don't feel so good, and then someone says, oh, it must be that new vegan diet of yours, and instead of trying to look into it a little deeper, they just end up kind of bowing to social pressures, which means that we actually can deal with this. You know, we can deal with how to make veganism less socially awkward, how to make uh, veganism taste better. Uh, so I'm going to use a case study of our 10 Billion Lives tour as an example of how we're trying out this new sustained vegan advocacy uh, strategy. And so I'm not just here to brag about our program. I'm not going to try to mention our program too much. I just want to use it as a case study to explain how we've made this start working and how hopefully you all can take this into your efforts. So on the Vans Warp Tour and in a couple uh, weeks of touring beforehand, we have gotten 30,000 people almost to watch a four minute video that we have paid them a dollar to watch. And the dollar is worth it because 84% of them have committed to eat more vegan products afterward and fewer animal products afterward, which means that really the bang for your buck is cheaper than almost any other form of advocacy there is. So the steps to realizing this change in this sustained vegan advocacy uh, strategy are first, obviously, to engage the target audience. We focus on youth, we focus on the well-educated, the kind of semi-rebellious people, basically people who are ready to not just hear our message, but quite possibly take it a step further and actually take action. It also, we found, helps a little bit to hide our cards and keep the subject of the video quiet until they've already accepted, said they're gonna take the dollar and kind of gotten to the screen. So just a little tip I would say, if you're gonna show people something they might not wanna hear or see, once you've gotten them to agree to hear or see it and then you tell them what it is, they're a lot less likely to back out than if you say, do you wanna watch this horrible thing? And they just say no and walk away. 
Uh, step two is to get a commitment, and this is really crucial. Research shows that getting a commitment substantially increases the likelihood that someone will follow through and actually do the behavioral change we want them to. So we have an online version of our pay-per-view where instead of paying them, we, have the, we give them a chance of winning movie tickets, and this is a screenshot of that, but it works basically the same on the truck, except on the truck, instead of saying you're entered to win the movie tickets, it says you enter, that you'll get your dollar, basically. But after they watch the video, we have have them pledge right on site to go vegan at least one to two days a week and by having not at this time kind of the last option like no one's gonna watch a four minute horrendous video of animal cruelty and kind of scroll through all these options and go and eh, no thanks not at this time and by no one I don't mean no one but only 15% of people do that which I think is a pretty great number so this commitment is a really really big part of sustained advocacy uh, this should also say three. I don't know what happened with the PowerPoint on this computer. Um, uh, but the third part of this is the foot in the door, which is by getting this commitment and getting their email address, which every single person that watches the video, we get their email address whether or not they pledge to eat more vegan food. But by getting the commitment and the email address, we now have a way that we can kind of get our foot in the door and keep the communication going with them. Because when we have like a targeted business campaign, we have constant access to them, right? We know where their doors are. We can come back every day or every week or every month or whatever frequency we want to. We can keep coming there and keep dialoguing with them or keep protesting them if they refuse to dialogue with us. But when it comes to interpersonal you know, uh, you know, conversations and behavioral change, we usually only have one chance to get the foot in the door of these people. We can't continually see the same people over and over again in most situations. So in that first time that we reach them, we need to get a way to reach them again in the future and again in the future. And so the fourth part of this is to, once we have reached them, utilize social norms by telling them that they're part of a large amount of people that are making this change too, they're not alone, show them that veganism is popular, and show them that it works in actually effectively reducing animal consumption. Uh, and not just consumption, but animals raised, for, raised and killed for food. And, oh, I guess my five showed up for some reason. Uh, it likes that number. Uh, so the fifth part of this, and this is really the critical part that I don't think is always being done in our advocacy, is to offer support resources. And it can be as simple as just a brochure, a website, or a guide, but we find that personal follow-up works best. This is the brochure that we give on the 10 Billion Lives Tour. And we, it's kind of one of a kind, because as far as we know, it's the first time that we've included a vegan coupon right on the brochure that they get. So they watch the video, they commit to eat vegan foods, they get a brochure with more reasons to go vegan, and right there they have a coupon and a recipe that uses that exact product in it. So they can start their vegan path literally the moment that they leave the interaction with us. And the follow-up, the more personal, the better. So we have a personalized email system that we send to every person who pledges to eat more vegan food. It's got their name, it's got how many days a week they pledge to eat, and how long they've been pledging for. So every three months they'll get an email that basically looks something like this. You know, hey Michael, uh, it's your friends at farm, you're making a difference in the, insert here, three months since you've pledged to eat fewer animal products three to four days a week, you have now made this big positive impact by sparing 21 animals from being raised and killed for food. And this number would change based on how long they've pledged for and what their frequency of pledge is. So they get this highly personalized follow-up telling them exactly what difference they're making in the world. And then of course the second part of this is that we're not just telling them what difference they make in the world, we're telling them what difference uh, they can make by telling them in the next paragraph that if they were to go fully vegan, they would make an even bigger difference, spare even more animals from being raised and killed for food. And so I'm keeping this real short because we started a little bit late today and we've got two awesome presentations afterward, but I just, or three awesome presentations afterward. Sorry, Victoria. <laughs> um, but. This is something that, again, I think can be applied to all of our efforts. It's a new outreach strategy. It's not perfected yet, so I'm not trying to tell you all how to do something. We're open to feedback, and we hope that people do in improve this and keep it going. It can be applied, I think, to any behavioral change. So if you're running a campaign to get people to not go to the circus or to stop buying fur or really anything that you're asking for individual behavioral change, I think it's critical that we find a way to keep the dialogue going with those people, that we don't just hand them a leaflet and and have them walk away forever and never hear from us again, but that we actually have a way of assessing how many people are following through with this change so that we can improve our efforts in the future. 
And like I've said before, just as campaigns against businesses and to change governmental policies continually check in to ensure that their reforms are actually being implemented properly, you know, it's very rare that we have a, a new change that happens with a business and we just trust them that they're doing it and walk away, right? If some organization or some business says that they stop testing on animals, we don't just take their word for it. We check back in, we check back in, we check back in, make sure they're telling the truth. And so in a less confrontational way, I think we have an obligation to do that with the individuals we reach to. Try to find ways to send surveys, check back in, and make sure that the behavioral change that we hope we got out of them is actually happening. So um, if you want to hear more about this, you can email me or go to our website. And also I'm giving a 20-minute presentation, and Deborah Ehrenberg is giving the other 20 minutes today in the Running Effective Campaigns panel. So if you want to kind of hear the longer version of this instead of the concise version, you can check us out. I think it's at 2 p.m. So thank you very much. Thank you.